Hey, uh, we're going to go ahead right now, and this will be the tutorial for the song Everlasting God. Um, I think it's by the New Life Worship Band. Um, you can go ahead and listen to the play along, and also there's just like the main track on, on YouTube. And then uh, you kind of see what I'm doing, but I'll just go ahead and start explaining stuff. Um, on this song, I kind of do a lot of different things. There's just kind of like a lot of different dynamics happening on the song. Because the first half of the song sounds very minor chord style, and the second half of the song is like all major chords almost. And so um, uh, you got to really change dynamics and the sound from each other from those first two halves of the song. And then also there's just the whole when they're not playing drums, when they are playing drums, how hard they're playing drums, the different dynamics. So you're going to kind of need to pull out almost all your tricks on a song like this. Um, so in the first verse, um, I'm just pretty much kind of picking arpeggio through the chords. You know, pe arpeggio, if you don't know what that means, basically instead of strumming the chords, we're going to be picking through the chords. So um, the first chord they do during the verse um, is the a, minor, the a major 7. So basically, um, you just hit an open A, but what you're going to do, instead of, uh, instead of holding this one with your ring finger right here, like going 0, 2, 2 on the A, D, and G strings, you're going to go 0, 2, and 1. So A, 0, D string, 2, G string, 1, and then the bottom two strings are just open as well. So... So you'll kind of notice it sounds, maybe it's a sound you're not used to if you haven't been playing guitar that long and you're not used to different sounding chords like that, the A major 7. But it's a very nice sounding chord, that's what chord they're using. So they're picking through that. And I'll just say as well, when we play this at our church, we don't play it as fast as a tempo as the track does. So um, just be aware of that too if you feel like you're struggling to pick through real fast. Um, uh, but that's just a kind of little side note. Um, so we're doing the A major 7, and then we're going to do the C sharp minor 7, and that's just 4 on the A string, 6 on the D string, 6 on the G string, and then the bottom two strings are open. So, and then, uh, when we hit the G sharp, actually I don't hit it up there, I noticed that on the, tutor on the video, the play along, the first time I did it, I hit up there, but I noticed while I was listening to it, they're not hitting it that low. They're doing a G sharp up here. You're gonna notice it sounds very light, and it's a uh, so you're just gonna be hitting uh, on the D string six, on the G string eight, and the bottom two strings are open. So. I guess if you really wanted to, you could add this 6th fret on the A string up here. Because all you're doing is just kind of adding that 5th again right here. Um, so... It sounds kind of funny, like, man, I feel like I'm not really hitting the G-sharp, you know, as opposed to that. Remember, the bass and other instruments are going to be in there with you, and so that really, that G-sharp tone will really take over. Um, but they're just kind of playing an inversion of what they're doing, so that G-sharp minor, don't, don't really worry too much about. It sounds so light, and it sounds so empty. There are going to be other instruments playing with you, so don't freak out about that. Um... But uh, those are the three chords for that part, for that for that first verse. And I would prefer, I, I'm not going to say you have to pick exactly what I'm picking, but uh, try to stay in that rhythm, you know, one and a two and a three, four, one and a two and a three, like that, you know, kind of just that that feel, that rhythm that I'm doing, da, 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 like that. So, um, the next, for the next verse, when I do that, like when the drums come in and then the, I, I do the verse the second time around. I do a lot of just soloing. I'm kind of just freestyling it. I'm kind of just playing what comes natural, um, what I'm hearing in my head. 
but don't get so busy that you start taking away from the verse because the verses tend to be more wordy than the choruses and so people are trying to focus in on that and they don't really need to be focusing on what you're playing um, so you need to be a little bit elusive that's why I use the minor 2 scale in this song because it's, it's a scale that's a little bit more elusive and it can kind of blend into the music a little bit more even if you are kind of um, playing around a little bit and just once again if you watch there is a video on this the, the e, e major uh, the key of E minor 2 scale so it's the minor 2 scale according to the key of E so that would start on F sharp and just and that's it right there so you can go ahead and play that back right here if you want to just keep watching that but I'll just I do a lot of just freestyling right there with my delay on um, my delay and my distortion and uh, also I would note too when it comes to distortion on the song uh, this is not a song that you want a ton of distortion so if you have a distortion that's like the gain's way up high turn it down because um, you are going to need to have some clarity in your notes and you don't want to just be all noise and you know be annoying to people so um, remember that also let me see Let's see, during the, the I Will Remain part. So I Will Remain, um, on the first time around, I'm still in the clean tone. So I'm not really, I don't really have any distortion on. And if you wanted to have distortion on, I would just, like I said, I would suggest a light distortion. That way you can get away with picking and it won't sound too muddy. And, uh, you know, I always think that, you know, if you have too much distortion, you're kind of limiting yourself on what you can do. It's not that, I mean... People tend to think that if you, you have a lot of distortion, you have a lot of power sound, but then you you can only do power sound. I mean, you can't do anything else. <laughs> so um, try to try to configure your stuff so that if you are going to use distortion, you can you can turn your volume knob down and it, it you know it dissipates a little bit. Um, just, just kind of by playing that, you can have a different dynamic from that. So, just have a range of, uh, you know, of ability to do stuff. So the chords, um, F sharp minor, C sharp minor, G sharp minor, C sharp minor, A. I just do, I usually do all bar chords right there, so that way I can pick through arpeggio through the, um, through the chords, and I won't just be strumming away. Especially because I like to use the delay, and then if I'm strumming while I use delay, you get all these extra, like, subdivision notes in there, and that's kind of not what you want. So, um, hi Andy. Anyways, so... <laughs> So if you are going to be playing through the song strumming, I would use reverb instead of delay. But, I mean, I just don't prefer to do the strum, though, because I just, I don't know, I just prefer to do the arpeggio. It just sounds... It just sounds, I just like the way it sounds better. So, um, I mean, if you disagree and you have a different philosophy, you can go ahead and do whatever you want. But um, but really try to do that. And also, if you, even if you don't like it and you don't agree with it and you're not going to play it, practice it that way anyways because you never know. You might want to just mix it up a little bit and play half of it strumming, half of it arpeggio. And you can, that way you have that freedom to do whatever you want. And then um, and I think during the... Uh, the second time around on the chorus, I am the I will remain part. So like I try to stay with like a drum beat, you know, I try to not just be like because that it just sounds too like it's just all muddy, it's just all noisy. You're just like you're just creating this monotone sound if you have your distortion on. 
So, like, you want some kind of pulsing there. And that way you can kind of play with the drummer and the bassist as well. And you just get a nice, like, pocket feel of the song, and it just sounds cool. You sound like you just, you're, you're in charge, you know what you're doing. And so, um... And it just it just creates a good dynamic because later on you can just go you know you can just strum through the whole thing that way it sounds like you went somewhere in the song so um, just that just kind of pay attention to the way I was palm muting it and um, just the different pulses I was doing um, I think I played it through twice already play it through one more time. I think the last two times on that B chord, I would I would like palm mute it a lot, but you can also on that last chord just you know just strum it out out so that way it sounds like on that last chord it just kind of like gets bigger and blows up a little bit. And so um, and so I think that's pretty much it during the uh, for the for the verse and the chorus. Um, I think right there is where I do like a walk up on the video on the play along. You'll have to watch for timing and then kind of just see what exactly what I'm doing. But I think, you know, on the goodness of the Lord, the goodness of the Lord. That's where I go into the, the where it goes into the, um, the instrumental before the bridge where it says, you know, you are the everlasting God part. Um, I just do like a walk up. Basically, I just do all the notes from B all the way to E. So B, C sharp, D sharp, E. And that's when I start doing those two chords. So um, I think on a chord sheet it might say like E suspended and E. But what I do, um, basically, I, mean, I am doing an E suspended and an E. But what I do is I leave the bottom two strings open. And then I hit the A power chord. That's a, it's like a higher one. It's a higher A. It's not like a pair or, or down here. It's um, on the seventh fret of the D string and the ninth fret of the G string. And so I just hit those four, uh, four bottom strings. So I'm hitting that A, and you can also hit the open A up here if you want to. You notice it kind of just makes it a little bit fatter and stronger. And then I hit an E with the with the uh, two bottom strings open. So E power chord like that, and I have the bottom two strings open. So and then you are the everlasting God. You are the everlasting God. So those two chords on the God part are C sharp and then A. But what I'll sometimes do, I'll alternate between doing chords and then doing octaves. So, you know, we said I hope on you. We said I hope on no one. We said I hope on no one. Who is the everlasting octaves? On C sharp. You are the everlasting. And I go to E. G sharp. Da, 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 like that, it's just uh, G sharp, A, G sharp, F sharp, E. So, 